welcome students myself rahul kotkar and here we are going to discuss about chapter number 10 that is magnetic fields due to electric current so students this is our lecture number 4 in this lecture we are going to study about the topic magnetic fields due to a current that is biot sivert law so friends you are familiar with this one in the previous lecture we studied about fleming's right hand thumb rule so in case of fleming's left hand uh, sorry fleming's right hand thumb rule we observe there when a current carrying conductor carries a current through it okay so at that time what we observe when it carries a current i through it at that time we found that there is the formation of magnetic field around it takes place means in simple manner a current carrying conductor carries a current through it at that time the magnetic field is produced around it so fleming's right hand thumb rule explains that the what is the direction of this magnetic field produced through this current carrying conductor okay means the direction of magnetic field is given by this fleming's right hand thumb rule okay but what is the magnitude magnitude of this magnetic field produced means amount of magnetic field it it's Uh, quantity okay how much the quantity of ma uh, magnetic field that is a magnitude of magnetic field is simply given by biot sivert law okay means how much the magnetic field amount of magnetic field okay that is a quantity of magnetic field produced okay that can be given by this biot sivert law and in short manner what we can say this topic is useful to determine or this biot sivert law is useful to determine the amount that is a magnitude of magnetic field produced around the conductor carrying a current through it okay so let's we start our topic so that is a biot sivert law for that we have to consider a conductor carrying a current which is not a straight which is having a algebraic or arbitrary shape okay which have a arbitrary shape means of any shape which is not a straight line only so in this conductor it having a infinite length let out of that we consider a some part of length l okay let we have this carrying a current i <coughs> so this is a arbitrary shape conductor carrying a current i through it okay so to determine the magnetic field produced at any point okay let we have this conductor carrying a current i through it in a upward direction so as the current flowing in a upward direction according to the fleming's right hand thumb rule what we can say the magnetic field produced in this conductor is should be the directed inward okay means if you consider this place or if you consider the point here in that case what we have the magnetic field produced is directed inside the magnet uh, uh, sorry it's directed inside the uh, paper okay while when you consider a point p should be at this place here it should be the outwardly directed so depending on how you can and where you can take the position of magnetic field or take the point where the magnetic field is produced in that manner the direction of magnetic field is also depends okay means simply the point where we are going to apply the uh, or where we are going to find the magnetic field is plays the important role okay means at this place or at this place according to that what we can say there should be the change in 
direction of magnetic field okay just imagine that okay the right uh, sorry the conductor is held in your right hand in such a way that the thumb is outstretched and the fingers your all the remaining fingers are curl around it okay so depending upon the uh, position you held it there should be the change in direction of magnetic field okay so first thing and let we consider here the point p is present at this place okay the position of point p is present here so to determine the magnetic field at this point p due to this whole conductor initially we distinguish or we make a small portions of this conductor or we distribute this conductor into the small uh, length element okay say as to each of length dl okay means what we are doing we cut this in, uh, whole conductor into the small small elements each of length dl okay actually we are not cutting them we distinguish or we distribute this whole conductor of length l into a small parts of length dl okay means each small part is of length dl okay let we consider out of that one is a, what this one that is a length dl okay let we consider that uh, here i will draw this diagram again okay this is the point p this is the conductor through which the current i is flowing let here this is a small element of length dl this is the simple distance that is the line joining the length of a small element okay means that is a line joining the small element okay and the point p and which here shown by a small letter r bar <coughs> which is the vector okay what is that and a line joining the length small element of length dl and the given point p where we have to find the magnetic field induction due to the small element okay so due to the whole element the magnetic field produced is b bar but due to the small element of length dl what is the magnetic field produced that should be the db bar and using this law we get the value of this one and according to that we can calculate by integrating the total magnetic field b bar okay so simply what you have to calculate here you have to just calculate the magnetic field induction produced at this point p due to a small element of length dl okay so now next thing what is the angle here that is a theta so let theta be the angle in between okay remember theta be the angle in between the length okay that is the angle in between the line joining line joining the small element of length dl and the point p okay and small element means in short what is that angle this is your small element of length dl okay this is the angle in between small element of length dl and the line joining the small element and the given point p and that is the angle and this is your theta so remember it's somewhat complicated to read to remember but it's very simple what is the angle that is the angle in between small element of length dl and the line joining the small element and a given point p okay that is your angle theta okay so i will start with the next one okay so up to that in this manner these are our considerations and according to that considerations what we have this is angle theta okay so simply 
now consider that here the directly value is given to you okay means db the amount of magnetic field produced okay i will not here i am uh, going to use only the magnitude form so according to that what is the value so simply it is your the amount of magnetic field produced that can be given by it is directly proportional to the okay the magnetic field produced at this point p that should be due to the small element it is given by the amount of current flowing through the conductor it is directly proportional to the amount of current flowing through the given small element it is directly proportional to the length of the small element okay it is directly proportional to the angle in between okay and sin of the angle in between the length of the small element and the line joining the small element and the given point p okay but inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the line joining the given small element and the point p okay remember i repeat again okay it is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conductor <coughs> once again the amount of magnetic field or magnitude of the magnetic field produced at a point p due to a small element is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conductor length of the small element it is directly proportional to the sin of the angle sin of the angle in between the small element and the line joining the small element and the given point p but it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the line joining the small element and the given point p okay so using that what we can say okay so using that finally we can write the formula according to this information db is directly proportional to the i dl sin theta divided by r square okay so by removing this proportionality sign we can write db is equal to okay db is equal to using the uh, sorry by removing this proportional sign we have to use the constant and what is that constant that is mu 0 upon 4 pi i dl sin theta divided by r square so friends remember this mu 0 upon 4 pi what is the mu 0 this mu 0 is called that is a permeability of a given medium that is a here mu 0 stands for vacuum if only the mu is there then you can say permeability of medium remember it is a permeability okay means ability to store the ability to store the magnetic line of force of a given medium okay that is called permeability of a medium and so that can be given by this formula your that is 10.31 okay so this is your formula uh, sorry huh. so this is your formula given here db is equals to mu 0 upon 4 pi ideal sin theta divided by r square okay now friends i again write this formula db is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi i dl sin theta divided by r square now we can see here this mu 0 means what that is a permeability of a given medium that is a vacuum whose value should be given by it is a constant term and his value should be given by 
okay what is the value that is a mu 0 is equals to 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 okay means this is a value of mu 0 that is a 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 okay tesla meter per ampere it's simple to remember okay as you remember this formula and what is the value of mu 0 if you uh, what is the unit of mu 0 if you have to remember so remember this is a constant quantity so no unit okay forgetting the value of mu 0 that is the unit of mu 0 just remember db db is measured in tesla okay so it is measured in a tesla then this unit of length unit of length get cancel only the simple unit of length one is remain okay means you should write as it move here so it is to the numerator and then remaining one the ampere okay so divided by ampere so in this manner you got the simple unit here it also have other units so no uh, point to discuss here so mu 0 is equals to 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 tesla meter per ampere is the unit as you substitute the value of 4 uh, sorry pi that is a 3.142 here so you will get the 1.26 into 10 to the power minus 6 okay means as by substituting the value of pi okay in simple manner you can remember this one okay for substituting the value of mu 0 upon 4 pi as it is what you have mu 0 upon 4 pi multiplied by uh, sorry which is equal to okay what is the value here mu 0 upon 4 pi which is equals to 10 to the power minus 7 means by simply you can substitute the value 10 to the power minus 7 here and got a value in the formula okay simply understood huh. so my point here to say that the value present here mu 0 upon 4 pi okay and this mu 0 upon 4 pi have a value 10 to the power minus 7 also okay huh. this is the magnitude form okay what is this magnitude form of a given magnetic field induction now to obtain its vector form so to obtain the vector form what we have again we should write the same relation okay there is no change db bar is equal to first i will write into the form okay i d l sin theta divided by r square so, okay just forward this sign there is no vector okay so in the vector form db bar mu 0 upon 4 pi okay now remember this what is this theta theta is the angle in between the small element dl and the line joining okay means r so it is angle in between dl and r so for that one i have to write the extra r here r divided by r so this dl and this r and sin theta so what is that dl r sin theta and you should write about this one as a simple i remains as it is and for this one you can write the cross product dl bar cross r bar divided by this r and this r square becomes r cube okay and so in this manner you got a relation db bar is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi i dl cross r bar okay divided by r cube so this equation means 10.31 and 10.34 actually it is a 34 it okay should be printed mystically as a 24 okay so both equations are known as a biot savet law which gives us the value of magnetic induction produced at a given point p okay so this is the inverse square law experimentally deduced okay what is the inverse square law means db is inversely proportional to the square of the distance okay 
now you should uh, think that okay as here the cube then how it is a uh, directly proportional uh, inversely proportional to the square law or how it should follows the inverse square law okay but actually both equation satisfies the inverse square law because it is the vector form okay we should consider we have to consider it into the magnetic form uh, magnitude form okay while applying the inverse square law so simply db is inversely proportional to what square of the distance and so it have obeys the inverse square law okay so in shortly what we can say using the biot savart law we can calculate the magnetic field produced by various distributions of currents okay and so for that the next point that we have to study okay so friends first tell me you should understood whole this phenomenon it's simply your biot savart law and while remembering this remember this biot savart law you have to use the simple trick you remember this formula and just make a sentence okay actually the statement is not given to you in this book but if you want to write the statements it's also simple so just write the magnitude of magnetic field induction produced at a point is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conductor okay sec it is directly proportional to the length of the small element it is directly proportional to the sin of the angle between okay sin of the angle between the small element and the line joining the small element and the given point okay and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the line joining the small element and the given point okay means this one so in this manner you can remember the statement also by a simple way okay even the statement is not given to in this book but may be asked okay so it's a very simple to remember okay no matter remember the value of constant okay and remember its vector form and remember one more thing it obeys the inverse square law is it okay so i will start the next point what is the next point okay now the next point is your current in a straight long wire in short it is the application of biot savart law so what we have to do here in the previous case we studied that okay there is the arbitrary shape wire okay there is no perfect shape but now in this case we are going to discuss a long straight current conducting wire okay let the current i is flowing in the upward direction okay length of this wire is actually capital l now we consider the point p is present here okay in sorry here the point p should be present here you may consider any point no problem okay we can consider here also now we consider a small element okay to determine the magnetic field induction at this due to this whole current conductor we have to consider a conductor of small length dl okay so let here this is the line joining the conductor and a okay a small element of the conductor and a point p having angle theta okay and then we consider this is a, as a r bar okay then next thing you should draw a perpendicular and this is the distance called capital r okay now means it's in short it is a perpendicular distance okay so friends now tell me while applying this one okay by applying the right hand thumb rule what we can say okay we can determine the direction of magnetic field produced okay and so when the direction of magnetic field remember one more thing here that you have to remember the magnetic field 
produced due to the small element or due to this conductor is always perpendicular to both that is the length of the conductor and line joining the conductor and a given point okay means it is always perpendicular to both this conductor also as well as this line also means you should consider that you held your hands in the manner like that they forms the okay first finger four finger and the thumb of the first hand left hand and the four finger of the hand is attached with the thumb of the left hand okay right hand four finger is connected to the thumb of the left hand okay and in this manner you can observe the two l's are formed so this is nothing but the situation here means this is your conductor this is the line joining and it is perpendicular to both that is the line joining as well as conductor okay so remember this is the direction of magnetic field so next point again here we have to consider the same thing the conductor having length capital l carrying a current i in the upward direction let here we consider this is the small element dl having angle theta this is the point p where we have to find the magnetic field induction db bar so friends let we consider that the length of the conductor okay infinitely infinitely small okay of length dl ha huh, so through which the current i is flowing so we can write here i dl be the i dl be the current length element it is known as a current length element but no need to use this complicated words you should simply write the current i is flowing through a small element of length dl and so according to the according to the bart savet law the magnetic uh, magnitude of the magnetic field induction produced here can be given by no need to write the vector here simply write the magnitude form db is equals to mu 0 upon 4 pi okay multiplied by i dl sin theta divided by r square okay by mistake this vectors are given here no need to write them okay so friends remember that we got a value of magnitude of magnetic field induction at this point p due to the small element only but we have to calculate the magnitude of magnetic field induction due to this whole straight current carrying conductor so for that we have to consider the two things we now calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field produced at point p by all the current length elements in the upper half portion okay upper half portion of the given wire and this can be we do by integrating it from 0 to infinity okay means you have to take the integration of this one from 0 to infinity in similar manner for getting the value of magnitude of the magnetic field produced at point p by current length element in the lower half of the wire lower half portion of the wire okay and so in simple manner by taking the value of db in the upper half means total magnetic field induction in the upper half and in the lower half just you have to add both okay you have to add the both values simply okay so we will get the total value of magnetic field uh, magnitude of magnetic field induction produced at point p okay now to calculate the total magnetic field at point b so let we have to consider the both things okay i will just magnify this to understood easily okay so what they do here they should take the okay they should take the 
total magnetic field B can be given by integration of okay integration of 0 to uh, integration of db okay from 0 to infinity okay should remember this is a infinite okay so by substituting the value 2 okay then in the formula we have a value mu 0 upon 4 pi it is also the constant taken outside the integral from 0 to infinity again what is the remain that is your inside it i d l sin theta divided by r square okay but as you observe this figure okay in this figure what you have okay i will repeat it again huh. so in this figure you have simple okay observe this formula you have to take an integration of this formula so simply what we have by taking the integration total magnetic field B can be given by taking the integration from 0 to infinity of this dB. Okay? So, after that, what is the value of R? The R can be found. We have to find the value of R and for that, we are using the, okay, as this is the theta, so this whole angle is what? Pi. Okay? And what is this angle? The remaining angle can be calculated simply, that is what? pi minus theta what is this angle pi minus theta and then what we can write sin theta is nothing but equals to sin pi minus theta and so therefore according to that formula sin theta is equal to okay opposite side divided by hypotenuse so what is the opposite side capital r divided by small r <coughs> so you should get the value here Okay, this is the one way to calculate the value of capital R upon R is equals to sin theta, uh, sorry, sin theta is equals to capital R upon small r. Okay, then what is the value of R? Okay, the R can be calculated using the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, in that case, what we can write R square is equal to L square plus R square and so R is equal to okay what is the R R should be the square root of L square plus R square and just substitute that value of R in this equation so totally you will get the relation like this okay so observe carefully and okay, okay. so next thing as you substitute the value of this sin theta as well as value of r in the given expression okay what you have to do substitute the value this one and this one in the given relation okay means by substituting this value you will get mu 0 upon 2 pi okay because this 2 and this 2 get cancelled only 2 pi is there current i is also outside 0 to infinity and in this whole bracket what we have r into dl divided by okay so remember this is your dl okay and this is nothing but the l square plus r square and okay in a square root and this is your l square plus r square raised to power 1 okay so this is the power 1 having a power 1 and this having a power raised to 1 by 2. Okay. So, you can add the both powers because there is a multiplication according to the formula a raised to m multiplied by b raised to n is equals to a raised to m plus n and so in this manner you will get the value of this one l square plus r square raised to 3 by 2 okay then as you substitute values here okay so what you get now remember while solving means you have to solve this particular integral okay you have to solve this particular integral and how to solve this integral that we discuss laterally you just remember that 
the value of this integral okay now you have to just keep in mind what is the value of this integral the value of this integral should be 1 divided by r square what is that integral it's simply integral of from 0 to infinity dl divided by l square plus r square raised to 3 by 2 okay and for this value should be 1 divided by r square <coughs> okay how it should be comes that we discuss laterally okay in the next uh, slide so by substituting this value 1 by r square in this relation what we have again as you substitute the value of this integral here that is the 1 by r square this r and r get cancel okay so you have only value of b as a mu 0 i divided by 2 pi r okay so what we can say from this relation we can say here from this relation we can say that okay the magnetic field at point p at a perpendicular distance r from the infinitely long straight conductor okay this is the value of magnetic field induction or magnetic field at point p okay at a perpendicular distance capital r and this is due to the both upper semi infinite part and the lower semi infinite part okay means the part above the small element and part part below the small element okay so thus the magnetic field produced due to semi infinite straight wire okay instead of considering the whole wire okay means upper part as well as lower part as we consider only the semi infinite straight wire okay means a single part so what you have this becomes okay half of the given value and as you make a half of the given value so what happens it should be the 1 by 4 mu 0 okay i divided by pi r okay means in short what we can say mu 0 i divided by 4 pi into r and this value is for what this value is for a simple case when you consider that only the semi infinite straight wire okay you are not going to consider the upper half part as well as lower half part okay so it is that clear you can see here in this case this is the expression that is 10.39 here you can see what is the value mu 0 i divided by 4 pi r okay and so in this manner what we can say in both cases what you can see it is inversely proportional in the magnetic field produced it is inversely proportional to the perpendicular distance okay it is a perpendicular uh, inversely proportional to the perpendicular distance so in short manner you have to remember both formulas okay that is a 10.38 and 10.39 what is the difference between both in a first case means 10.38 what we consider we consider the upper as well as lower semi infinite part of the wire while in the other case what we consider only the lower means any semi infinite part of the wire okay so next one that we have to solve this one this integral how it should becomes it's a very simple so as you take this integral i is equal to okay so friends remember let here we just draw that diagram which is given in our book okay like this this is your r this is your small r this is a theta okay this is a point p okay now from this relation as theta and pi minus theta is same so let's just consider that is a tan theta this angle should be your tan theta so in case of tan theta again what we have the opposite side capital r divided by adjacent side that is a l okay let which l is used here small l is used okay so according to that what we have so all l is equal to okay so in that case 
what is the value of small l just a minute okay so from geometry of figure what is the value of small l that is a r tan theta okay as you differentiate this relation what you have dl bar oh sorry dl is equal to r remains constant actually it is a capital r okay derivative of tan is the sec square okay and dl as you differentiate the given relation with respect to theta on both sides so you have dl by d theta and so i will write for my convenience this one as a dl is equals to r sec square theta d theta again as l is equals to 0 lower limit and upper limit are like this okay so by substituting this value as l equals to 0 in the given relation so tan theta having value is equal to 0 at what angle it will have a zero value zero value means zero angle okay and tan theta is equal to infinity at what angle it should be possible pi by 2 okay so means your limit now interchange from 0 to infinity instead of that 0 to pi by 2 for a given change okay now by substituting all this value we have i is equal to that is i is equal to this one okay what we are doing dl value of dl should be capital r sec square okay actually it is a capital r sec square theta d theta okay then what is the value of small l okay so friends remember there is so much com complications are doing here i will write this one r sec square theta d theta divided by okay i have to put the value of small l small l as as a r okay 0 to pi by 2 huh. so as i substitute the value of r l as a r tan theta so it should be r square tan square theta plus r square raised to 3 by 2 okay so as i take a r square common from both so r square should be common and square and square get cancel what is the remain that is only 1 by r square okay then integral 0 to pi by 2 now here instead of putting this sin square cos square theta what you should put here just simply put 1 okay what is the remain here 1 plus tan square theta and we have a famous identity is equals to sec square theta okay so as you substitute this one here instead of i will write here okay sec square theta so raised to 3 by 2 so as this is sec square theta this is a square okay so both get cancelled what's the remain here no need to write here this cos square also okay they will use the different manner uh, or different substitutions instead of they they will write here sine upon cos okay they will write tan as a sine upon cos then make a cross multiplication etc etc but it's the very easier way to solve what is that okay simply just substitute this okay no need to write here because in the numerator there is a cos square term is there no okay here no cos square term so no need to write only this one i will write instead of this what is that okay means i will write this relation 0 to pi by 2 okay sec square theta d theta as it is okay this r and this r get cancelled only 1 by r square is there okay and now what is that instead of this value i will write here that is sec square theta okay but what is that raised to 3 by 2 this square and this square get cancelled okay now what is the remaining here only cube this cube and this cube also get cancelled what you have again you have simply 1 by sec theta d theta okay and what is the 1 by sec 1 by sec is nothing but what that is your cos theta d theta and then simply as an integral of this one 
cos theta d theta is what sin theta okay and as you substitute the limits so you have sin pi by 2 minus sin 0 and sin pi by 2 has a value 1 and so you have a value of this integral as a 1 by r square okay so friends you can use the simple way here just substitute the famous identity okay what is that by substituting the famous identity 1 plus tan square theta is equals to sec square theta okay so now we stop here so if you have any doubt related to this lecture you can ask me into the comment section thank you for watching video